I have a dilemma or a problem. I have a problem. My sister-in-law is getting married on Saturday and I don't have a dress. I thought I had a dress, but now I'm realizing it's going to be really warm. It's an outdoor wedding and the dress I thought I was going to wear has long sleeves. And I really don't feel like sweating buckets the whole time at the wedding, so I think I need a new dress. And instead of going buying a new one, I'm thinking I'm going to try to make one in 24 hours. I love these shoes. Oh my gosh, they're my favorite. Might even wear them to the wedding. Okay, bye Benson. I'll be back. I'll be back, don't worry. I, I'm not leaving you forever. I'm just going to the store for a couple hours and then I'll be back. So I'm at the fabric store. I can go to another one afterwards. I'm not very successful at this one, but I thought I'd give this one a try. It's a big one. It, it, we'll, we'll see. There's a nice, you know, pretty kind of special kind of bridal section. So I'm hoping I can find something pretty in there. So right at the front of the store, they have this huge section of kind of fancy fabric, satins, they got some chiffon, just some, you know, special occasion fabrics here. And this has been on sale for so long and it's buy one yard, get two free, is it? Yeah, yeah, look at that sale. Yeah, it, it was a good sale, which now thinking about it, I should have done that. I could have got my whole dress for $10 instead of the big, bank and price that uh, I did pay for my fabric but I did look at all my options before I did go to the bridal section where they had the smoking amazing beautiful drop gorgeous fabric I did try but nothing compared to the fabrics in here and obviously they come with a very very a very high price tag because they're so beautiful and for some reason when I think of a dress to wear to a wedding I immediately think florals. I want so many flowers on my dress that it doesn't even look like a dress. It just looks like a garden of flowers. So that's what I went to. And also I had to stay away from white because obviously I can't wear white to a wedding. So this is the first fabric that really popped out to me because I wanted embroidered, embroidered flowers. That's what I really liked. And then this one, I was like, oh, that one's nice too because it's embroidered and it's flowers. Two things I was kind of looking for. But then I saw the price tag and I was like, ooh, $51 a yard. Um, let's keep looking. So I did. There was a few fabrics that were slightly cheaper, but then I just started to find out that $51 a yard, that's a scoop em deal in this section. Because I then found this one, which, oh my gosh, I just saw this. I saw this and I was like, this is the one. This is the one. This is the one I'm getting. It is pink. It has blue in it. It is perfect. It is everything I dreamed of. And then I looked at the price tag and then all my dreams shattered to the ground. And then I, I moved on. And to be honest, all the other fabric there just kind of felt like mother of the bride type of vibe. So I ended up going with the $51 yard fabric. And once I decided that, I was like, okay, we're doing it. We are making a dress out of this $51 yard fabric, the, the most expensive fabric I've ever purchased. We needed to figure out the lining because it was sheer. And I was going between a light blue and a purple and also the champagne on the side. And then I also found yellow, which I was like, hey, this is you know, pretty nice. But I ended up going with I'll show you in a minute. I just spent $176 on the fabric. I just spent $176 on fabric for a dress. One dress. <sighs> a little bit more than I thought I was going to ex spend, ex expect, ex spend, same time. You guys got it. But I think it will be worth it. So the fabric I got, which you guys already saw, was the nice floral one right there. $51 a yard. I got two and a half yards. So it was like 127-ish, maybe. And then for the lining, I ended up going with the purple. And then I also did get some black satin fabric here, which I'm gonna use for the straps. And then for notions, I just got some thread and uh, a little zipper. 
But that's what I'm working with. I don't have a lot of time, so I'm gonna get started now. I am going to start sketching my dress, which my idea for the dress is I want an open back, I want just like a nice simple front, and then I want a flowy bottom. But I don't have enough to do like a gown or anything, so it's probably gonna be either, I'm hoping it's past my knees. I'm hoping it's like past my knees. Next step is we are gonna do the sketch on our mani here. And I just have some thin tape here that I'm going to tape on here the shape I want. I'm done drape, not draping. I'm done drafting out the top. So now that I have my pieces, which I decided on doing three pieces for my top here. So one in the middle, which this gets mirrored to this side. Then I have one piece over here, which is gonna be very open back. This is the only part of the fabric that's gonna be touching my back because for this wedding, I do not want any sweat dripping down the back of me. Don't want anything touching it. So it's gonna be like this. And then the third piece is just this piece on this side. Here we go, first one. Okay, now I'm actually draping. And draping is just the process of laying down fabric onto a body form like this and you get your pattern pieces. I love draping to get pattern pieces just cause it's so much easier than flat pattern making. And most of the time it just fits. It's just, it's a lot easier. There's not as much trial and error. I find personally when I do it, just because my body form is pretty much the same size as me, it's a little bit smaller. So I usually just adjust for that. But this is my favorite method of actually making patterns. So just like what the lady told me at the fabric store, she said, you probably should make a draft before you actually cut into your fabric. Which is very smart. I was probably gonna do that, but now that she mentioned it, I'm definitely gonna do that, so. Cutting out a pattern first, and then we're making a draft. So for making the pattern, I have my two pattern pieces here, so I'm pretty much just tracing them onto my paper, and then adding seam allowance. So I'm just gonna give myself a round of applause real quick, because I got the neckline. Correct. First time around. And a pat on the back. The only thing I didn't get right was the sides. I think I wanted a little bit longer. This is my iron. Well, I'm not gonna waste any time. I'm just gonna jump into it. I'm gonna start cutting my lining fabric. I'm gonna start cutting the $50 yard fabric and hope that if I mess up, I can fix it. For this special, extra special pricey fabric, I'm gonna be cutting it a little bit different because you can see these really cute birdies on here, right there. They are facing upwards this way. So the only way I can cut it is this way, the pieces. So because my pieces are see-through, they are sheer, I need to sew them to my first lining piece here so I don't see the seams when I'm wearing the dress. I want them to be hidden. So I'm actually just going to layer these one on top of the other and just sew them like they're one piece. Bam, bam. Turkey chicken. I got all my pieces sewn with the lining and then, you know, the party in the front, liner in the back, party in the front. I knew this would happen at least once today, sewing the seams. <laughs> on the wrong side, look at that. One outwards, one inwards. Beautiful. So I just realized my next step is making the straps. And you guys know I, oh gosh, I hate making straps. I don't know why I keep making dresses with thin straps. Cause I'm terrible at it. Hi, come on in. Every time my dog wants to come into my room, he just stands at the door. Doesn't knock, doesn't do anything, just stands at the door and just waits for me to open it. 
So I'm gonna give you guys the short version of this because it was, it was messy. So I had this black fabric. I went ahead, I tried to make straps from it, but because I did not get enough, so I couldn't cut on the bias, I tried to cut it straight up and down. I tried multiple methods to make this work, but it just did not work. I tried the string down the center, I tried the bobby pin, I tried everything and that's everything, and it just, it just didn't work. Well, time for plan B. Okay, got it. My plan B is to use my lining fabric right here, cut it on the bias, cut them real small, make them the itty bitty spaghetti straps I'm dreaming of, and then use those as straps. Oh my gosh, this is like a dream. Oh, oh. wow. Wow, 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 wow. Holy. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Look at these straps. Look how skinny they are. They, oh. <sighs> this is what I'm talking about. This is, oh gosh, my dreams have been made. Thank goodness. Well, that only took me three hours to do these straps. Should have taken me 15, but that's okay. We are back on track. So now I can actually put the lining with the outside of the fabric together, attach the straps, and um, yeah, that's all I'm doing for this step. I got some good news. It fits. And look at that back. Oh my god. This is my favorite part, the back. Like those strap, each strap, this open. Oh my gosh, I'm tired. I'm putting my sunscreen on. It's 8, 10 in the morning. And I am just ready to finish this dress today. I am so excited. Also a little nervous. A little nervous. Very glowy. I was gonna say greasy, but I'm glowy. Good morning. So to start today off, I am going to be working on the skirt because I finished the bodice last night, which I'm so happy, I'm so proud of myself. I figured that out last night, but now today we need to finish the skirt and then put it together. And for the pattern, I am not gonna just try to find one that's perfect because I don't think I'll find one out there. I think I'm gonna need to buy a skirt block and then manipulate it. So the skirt block I ended up finding was on Etsy. It was just like a basic, basic pencil skirt, skirt block with dart. So I ended up getting that one. I cut it out. It's way shorter than I wanted it to be. So I just took a tape measure and tried to measure how long I wanted it to be. As you can see, it's very difficult to try to measure legs. So I just added more than I thought I would need. And then I just kind of reconstructed that pattern, made it longer, got it to the right size. I needed it. And it was a good base for me to start off with. Friends, I'm putting the extra effort in today and I made my pattern with hopefully the correct length. I also cut it out my mock-up right here to see if it fits perfectly because I want the bottom of my skirt to be so nice. I want it to be so fitted, not, not really fitted, but I want it to be nice and fitted, but it needs to actually look good here. Otherwise this dress might look like it's supposed to be for a 10 year old. So looking at it right now, it's pretty good. It's not perfect. So there is a couple alterations I want to do, but they're not big. It's just a little bit. It is a little bit big here in the front. So I'm going to take it in just a bit. So it's a bit more snug throughout the hip area, but below, I think below the hip, it's a good one. So I'm really just fixing here. I'm thinking this is a good length for the slit where you can't see my butt cheeks, just, you know, in any position, but it's still high enough so I can get a nice, breeze through here, you know? Cutting fabric is honestly the scariest part of sewing because once you cut it, you cannot uncut it. Especially with $51 a yard fabric. Here we go. See, sewing is the easy part because you got your handy dandy seam ripper. If you ever make a mistake, you can seam rip it, sew again, seam rip it, sew again, seam rip it, sew again, you know? You get where I'm going with it. Good news, I only had to seam rip Two seams, I think. Only two seams that whole time, and I got them done. I didn't mess up too bad, other than just sewing the slit wrong and also sewing one backwards. Okay, seam rip three times. 
Also, the prep of sewing is so much work, like cutting out pieces of fabric takes forever. Also, just getting out your sewing machine is a hassle. I just got really, really excited because I just finished the one lining of the skirt and I was like, oh my gosh, I need to see how this looks with the top. So last night when I was working on the top, I was very frustrated and tired and just wasn't gonna attempt to try to put any boning into the top. So I'm trying it now. I did one and it looks amazing. It looks incredible. Look at the non-boning compared to the boning. What I'm doing next is I'm actually gonna start connecting the top to the bottom. So to connect it without any visible seams, you know, raw edges, I am going to connect it by taking the front piece of the top here and connecting it to the bottom piece. And I'm just pinning it here, but I'm leaving the lining just flapping in the wind for now until we tuck it over and then we'll be able to cover it up. So it's zipper time. So for zipper time, I am gonna continue my streak of making this super professional and pretty and seamless. So for the zipper, I don't wanna show the seam or really the zipper at all because it's gonna be an invisible zipper. So how I'm gonna attach it <laughs> is I'm gonna attach it to just this first layer here and also sew the seams, just these first layers together. And then afterwards, this is the fancy part. I'm then going to hand sew this on top, fold it over so you can't see the zipper. Magic. So today, I ended up sewing for 11 hours with a couple small breaks. So by the time I got to the 11th hour, I was, I was done. I thought I was gonna finish the dress today, got close, not happening. Uh, I did not think I'd be here day three still sewing. I thought it was gonna take me a day and a half, but here we are, three days later. I'm lazy, so I'm not gonna actually take my top off and be 100% with this try on. Come on, man, zip. Are you, whoop. She's on, and you probably don't see any fit issues just by looking at me right now, but there is. There's a little bit of excess right here in the front, so it kind of looks a little puffy here. So I'm gonna have to continue the darts down a little bit, just so it's not loose here, because it fits everywhere else, I feel like, but it's just right here. It's a, it's a little big. So I do have two darts coming down here. So I'm thinking if I just go in and just make the darts a little bigger, that will hopefully fix my issue. I need to focus for this because I just tried it on and I somehow sewed uh, the dart sideways, like I was going across my body. Yeah. I'm ready to hand sew it up in here. It's gonna take me about 45 hours to do this, but I am mentally prepared. This is the last thing I have to do, so I feel good about it. We're not really great about it, but you know, I feel good about being finished soon. So after sewing that zipper, I'm kind of feeling a little lazy now. I don't know if I really want to hand sew the whole bottom of my dress. Originally I was going to, but now I'm thinking to be just see, to be do, I don't know what that was. I'm thinking I just want to take the lazy way out and sew it on my sewing machine.
Okay, so I am all ready to go to the wedding and I thought I would show you guys the dress now before the wedding because I know I probably just won't take pictures or won't do anything at the wedding. So here is a full dress, me ready before the wedding so you guys actually get to see what I look like when I wore this dress. Ta-da! Ta-da! <gasps> Overall, I am just so happy with this dress. I was a little nervous about making a dress that was actually fitted because it's the first time I've done it. I usually always do a flowy skirt when I've made my dresses in the past, but I feel very accomplished that I was able to conquer making a fitted dress. Very happy. I also love that it incorporated the slit just because it makes it so nice because if it wasn't, this would have been not very nice to dance around in, you know, get moving on the dance floor tonight. I'm also very, very happy with my choice of an open back because I know it's gonna be muggy today and a bit sweaty, so I want the least amount of fabric on my body, but also look nice, you know? I don't wanna be looking like I'm just wearing a bikini to a wedding. I wanna be presentable. 10 out of 10. I usually never give myself a 10 out of 10 except my wedding dress. I, I would give that like a 9.9 .9 out of 10 because now looking back on it, there's a few things I would change, but this, 10 out of 10. Okay, now I gotta go to the wedding. I'll show you guys some pictures, perhaps some footage of me wearing this dress today and tonight, but that's all I have to say. I gotta go. See you guys later.